Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co host, Calden S. This episode, we're going to be talking some pulp, not in your orange juice, but in your Hero Clicks, and answer some listener questions. This episode 468, Howdy Howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100? Beast of deadpan humor. Over oh, they, uh, six over people humor. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Zimmy will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that for everyone. Are you <laughs> kidding? Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you are getting things from the shop.wizkids.com, use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order at shop.wizkids.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, it's Pulper. A pulper. The return of Pulper. Friggin', it's pulpin' time, man. It's pulpin' time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fun. We did a video on it. That'll be up, I don't know, next week, this week? Who knows anymore? I don't know. I got zero clue, bro. But uh, you guys... We got a really fun episode today. Before we get into all of the fun pulper nonsense, let's jump into what made us happy this last week. Simeon, what made you happy, my man? Ooh, what made me happy actually happened today along I eighty as I was sitting oh, in my no. work truck, <laughs> oh, no. staring off into the distance just wistfully. No, <sighs> uh, oh, um, please don't. That might be not. a Patreon exclusive. This is it's not a similar. podcast story. Oh. <laughs> it's similar to a previous uh, blooper show that we posted on our Discord. Um, There's a bit of a trend with yeah, your work. People are weird. Team. People are weird. At, yeah. Well, just in general, I guess. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with all of them. But uh, some some more so than others. What made me happy this last week was I played in the Avengers 60th pre-release. Um, I also found out nice. that I was supposed to be hosting a event at my venue while I was in Colorado. So I found that out after I got oh. back and people were like looking at me funny like, where were you? <laughs> it's like, That's really funny. Uh, but yeah, kind of funny, kind of sad. But um, I actually didn't miss any of the pre-releases in Omaha. I thought uh, Bellevue was getting theirs last week, but it's actually going to be this week. And then I think Krypton is also doing theirs this Thursday. So I won't make it to all of them, but this sure. was the best I've pulled in a pre-release and the best I've done in a pre-release or just sealed in general in a decent chunk of time because it feels like the last like four sets in a row I've pulled rares. I feel you there, bro. It's been so, tough. Yeah, it was it was just fun um, getting back into like after two weeks of not playing any hero clicks, really not doing a whole lot of hero clicks anything. It was nice to get back into the swing of things and pull out a well, not really a W because there was three people with uh, three and O records. Oh, were there really? Wow, I think I know Luke and me did, and I'm not sure if Aaron. I think Aaron might have also, um, but. Yeah, I did. I did well, and I pulled well, and pulling well helped me too. Well, but uh, no, it was it was fun to get back into it, and um, we kind of set our piece on how we thought the set would be and sealed. And I think it, I honestly, even though I kind of pulled one of like the crazy things to get in sealed, there was multiple games where had my opponent just rolled like one higher, or had they just hit like a few more attacks. And I'm talking like roll like seven or sixes kind of thing. If they had just done that like one or two more times, then I might have lost or I would have lost in one case for sure. Yeah, it was just it was cool. I mean, you pulled insane, but it's crazy to hear that the games were that close still. It's like one of the best pulls I mean, that we said, one of the best sealed pulls ever. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> this is a ton of fun. It really, it really was a ton of fun. I was pretty cool with pre-release. I pulled the worst at our table, which was still a super rare, which is better than like 90% of the times I get anything in pre-release, which is really cool. But you getting like super prime Thor, I was like, dude, that's 
that's a cannon. That's just easy mode. I, I thought it was going to be. So yeah. it's interesting to hear that you had some tougher games. It's yeah, it's crazy because there was a few times I just really wanted to pull off like the pulse wave, and then there was a few times where I'm like, he's got triple target with like five range, and top dial he's a like from range he's a. 13 i think a 13 for five with psychic blast yeah so like you absolutely could just like pick and choose certain things to like just delete but then there's stuff with stealth that he can't get around except with pulse wave and there's um somebody was playing like a vision that had like super senses invincible and i'm like man i'm just gonna start like pulse waving this stuff a bunch and then once i started like saying pulse wave and like rolling for it I like started it was more like gambling where I was just like let me roll some doubles like daddy needs his doubles I want to do three damage pulse wave Uh. after like I did probably 12 pulse waves in the entire day three games and I only hit doubles once and it didn't really even matter because it was against a single target that didn't even have a rollout so I could have just done my printed like my five damage and but whatever I finally did it at one point yeah heck yeah dude yeah man every time there's ever been an ability that's like if you roll doubles x happens i'm just like that'll never happen that'll literally never happen and i don't want to try to make it happen i just want to it's a lot of work a lot of work yeah but but they're fun they're really fun but it's like man it's like that one y'all gotta the, make me roll doubles the mighty you guys want me to have hella. good luck in this dice game <sighs> yeah that um the mighty thor hella figure that had like this weird special power um gosh i thought hers was was like a crit hit wasn't it i thought hers like you had a crit or something or was it it wasn't hella it was angela yeah angela it was uh yeah the prime of hella yeah it was her special damage power um uk no um was it hella jeez i don't know whatever it was when you crit hit it was like down dial you had to get knocked onto this power and it was when you roll a crit hit they just are ko'd they just like become ko'd it doesn't matter how much damage you're dealing or anything like that they just became ko'd i've only seen it pulled off like once ever yeah it's, yeah, la- it's right, hella's yeah. last three clicks it's not the prime it's the normal one oh, it is uh, character okay. 200 points or less would take damage from a close attack made by hella that was a critical hit instead immediately ko that character so i've only seen it pulled off a few times and it's so rare it's almost like it is just it also that power gives you exploit weakness and shape change but other than that it's just worthless power it's so bad like it it's cool, but it yeah, almost never yeah. happens. I have heard people uh, saying like that sentry, like the throw him into the sun power, where when he rolls like a ten or that is pretty cool. That I happens like that frequent enough. So yeah, I don't know. I think we'll see we'll see more stuff like that. But For Thor's sure. is, I feel like rolling doubles. In my opinion, it was rare enough that. Maybe you should do four damage. Maybe you should do printed damage. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you, yeah? Maybe it's too good for that. I don't know. Five <laughs> maybe damage. Maybe it's a little too good. Uh, anyways, what made me happy this week, guys? I went and saw Beyond the Spider-Verse, or whatever it was called. That did not make me happy. That made me incredibly upset. And if you thought... I mean, it's like fundamentally a bad movie. But what did make me happy was going to the Renaissance Fair with my ma. So we went up Sioux Falls, went to the Renaissance Festival, and we just hung out, had a good time. I grabbed my old D'Artagnan shirt, and I had to bring my D'Artagnan boots to wear. Uh, so I looked a little renaissance And we walked around. We checked it out. We saw some jousting, which kind of rocked. And then I saw what I can only assume was, like, the same thing you were kind of looking at, Simeon, with, like, these knight dudes that, like, fight each other and, like, bash, like, skulls. Dude, they were hitting each other hard. They were bashing each other, bro. I was like, dang, they're, they're, like, dude has to have a concussion or something under that helmet because they were wailing on each other. It was really cool. Um, So you saw those knight fights. They rocked. That was easily the highlight of the day. Way too much fun. Way too cool. Uh, and then after the Renaissance Fair, 
we went and saw a play at Old Town Dinner Theater where I've done a lot of plays in the past before. And yeah, we watched it there, volunteered, of course, so we could get in for free and then also eat a meal for free. You know, it's pretty nice. kind of rocks. It's a pretty good, pretty good system they got going where it's like, hey, dinner and a play, 60 whatever dollars a ticket or or it's free. And you have to wash dishes. I don't know. Just kidding. They only have one dishwasher. I got to serve, which is super fun. Serving is like not bad at all. It's like, all right, what do you want? There's three options on the menu. It's not hard to memorize. <laughs> you, know, you want oh, beef, something chicken, or other than water? Okay. Yeah. No, I'll try you want, to remember yeah. that. So tough. What are the other two drinks we have? Oh, coffee and tea. All right. I don't, man, this is hard. We have such an insane menu. Um, yeah. So, like, that was super easy. And then I bring out the food. What do you want for dessert? Oh, it's the same thing for everyone? Ha ha. Get, you know, video idiot. Enjoy your... It is delicious. It was awesome. <laughs> it was like this blueberry. Some type of blueberry cake. It was really good. Uh, the beef was great. I had, man, one of the best steaks ever. I don't really? even know what it was. But, like, dude, the way she cooked it, it was, like, the perfect medium rare steak. I was like, man, this is so awesome. Renee is such a good cook. They have an insane crew working back there. It was like this money. This is delicious. So that was great. The 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 play itself, uh, movie game is what it's called, is like not a good play. The actors killed it. Oh my gosh. Like the story, you know, it came time for the main character to like get his like, you know, oh, everything's gonna be all right. You know, here's your happy ending. You get the girl and whatever. And it's like Man, you're like kind of a scum, you know, like the main character. I'm like, dude, you're kind of a, like a loser scumbag. Like, she can do so much better than you. Why, why is she settling? You know, it's just like, oh, this is horrible. Um, like, I did not, like, the main character did not deserve any main character happy ending anything. This dude is just awful. He was like the worst. So, itself, not greatly written. Sorry if none of them are listening to this, but sorry if you are listening to this and you get offended. But you guys killed it. The actors killed it. The director killed it. The set was awesome. It takes place in more in about four ish areas, but the way they did the set was two turntables uh, with a wall on each one, so you could flip them and they could change the scene behind them. Like so, all the walls are different colors, right? And so, while one side was facing towards us, the audience, they could remove the chairs, put on a table, uh, put shelves on there, whatever they needed to, to then turn the wall for the next scene, and it was a totally different place. So instead of saying, oh, okay, so it has four sides, two walls that flip, it's only four different areas, but it was actually way more than that, because they could just take the set pieces off, move them around, put something on the walls, whatever, you're in a different location. It was really, really cool, and... I don't know. It was just an awesome. It was one of the coolest sets I've seen built for a play in a really long time. Nice. Did a great job. Did a great job. So it was just a great old, great old fun weekend. I also had a blast at pre-release, but I pulled Moonstone, so we're not going to talk about it. But maybe more, more happy was the Renaissance Fair and whatever uh, the play. So it was a grand old time. But let's jump into some pulper here. We got an article by WizKids. They're going into pulp. This is a basically uh, rules and clarifications with a ooh ah Simeon. That's right. A little bit of a ban. Ooh, I, I sure do love yeah. a ban. Off rip, you're like, what could they possibly ban in pulp? There's nothing broken in the common, uncommon, or rare section that would make it super unfun. So but that is where yeah. you're wrong, listener. Just a a uh, quick let's, overview yeah. for anyone that's just now hearing about pulp. Think popper, if you know what popper is, add rares and then remove almost all the extra random stuff that like popper could include potentially. There there is like no sideline blah blah blah. But yeah. Just as like a quick anyone that's like hearing pulp and like what is that? I haven't heard of that. Now you know. Yeah. But you'll you'll know more in a second. A little, a little more. So yeah, it's common, uncommon, rare figures. Now they, they do this whole thing to say uh, our characters from starter sets, fast forces, miniatures, games legal. So they say pulp is a booster set, right? So what that means is starter set. Well, let's say a Fantastic Four, Cosmic Clash, or like the Master of Evil starter. Since that isn't tied to a main booster set. 
those aren't legal for pulp at all. Things like um, Batman team up and then the Batman team up starter with the Teen Titans go and the Scooby gang. That is legal because it is tied to a main booster set. Boom. Very simple. Our team up cards legal and pulp. A lot of people were playing them. Uh, the last time I played pulp up in Sioux Falls. And also I think overall everybody was playing a lot of team up cards and pulp, but no, they are not legal at all. You can only use your normal base cards, which is kind of a bummer. You and I talked about that and we were hoping that, you know, these team up cards would finally have a place to really shine. Yeah. And it is a bit of a bummer to see them not legal and pulp. Like robot mans and I know. Uh, gosh, what's the other one from Batman? Patriots, dude. Patriot with the oh, Avengers. Yeah. Oh, also Patriot, a Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter would rock. Yeah. There would have been yeah, there would have been a decent amount that like could have made it. Could have been interesting. But, Oh, well, no team up cards for pulp. Can your team have a sideline in pulp? Absolutely, it can. Basic sideline rules. They say two elements per 104 points of the build total. So that's pretty fun. They go on to clarify what makes a booster set. We already went over that. And they also go on to clarify characters from starter sets, fast forces, and miniatures games legal, which we already clarified. The ban list for pulp is as follows. X-Men Rise and Fall 028, the uncommon Professor X. And the Future Foundation 044 Molecule Man. Molecule Man would have made Pulp so miserable. I'm yeah. pretty cool with this change. And in Florida's version of Popper, we saw about a million Professor X uncommon like swap teams, which is really annoying. So even though he's not the only swap that's possible in Pulp, he is the most obvious, the easiest to do. So they got rid of Professor X. Just the most options. Yeah. Just yeah, exactly what you said. The most obvious. Yeah, he so, works with X Men and like other keywords that no one really plays with that much. But X Men is always going to be like one release or like a minimum one release of X Men every year. So, oh yeah, basically, it makes. Sense. Uh, they do say specifically for these changes that internal testing as well as emails sent to us by concerned players have turned up two figures that will likely have detrimental effects on the meta and we are therefore banning them so it's really interesting that number one hey WizKids listens so yeah if you wrote them a concerned email about characters in pulp or are an internal tester ooh, ah, they're they're testing the game they're figuring out what's going to be good i like the idea that not just are they testing figures but they're testing a format that's cool i like that a lot so i'm curious how much testing went into like theme and and all these other formats. I guarantee zero testing went into golden. No offense. I don't I can't imagine it did. There'd be so much to do. No. Yeah. Like it's not worth the time There's and energy to copy test golden. Cat and like you the, you the, can just be like golden is broken and we're gonna say it's broken, so have fun playing golden. Like that's just what golden I think that's what even what they said golden is to them. They're like, Yeah, it's dumb. People yeah, it's gonna be nuts. Yeah, find crazy. the most broken stuff throughout HeroClix history, including like ATA's resources. <laughs> oh, yikes. Yeah. So, no, I like that they're saying, you know, hey, we're getting all this stuff done for Pulp. It's also, it has like really fun background for Pulp on their website because of the, the funny little whatever font and background. They capped the article off. So, remember last article, we got to see a look at Dragula, ah, 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 who I'm a huge fan of, by the way. Um, and this one, we see Sinestro's Cordian Thunderers, which. Yeah. I don't. I didn't know anything about Sinestro and the I, weapons. I knew about the weaponer of Core. I knew. Yeah, that's right. I, I thought. assume that these guys are somewhat related, but they look like apparently rocketeers with yeah. the uh, Japanese flag on their chest. Oh, they're big. They're big people. weeaboos over there in Core, dude. They <laughs> love themselves some anime. Yeah, <laughs> they love it. They're dude. big, big anime stands on Core. Yeah. But they. I want to say... know what made made the weaponer different. The, like weaponer of cord was he just like literally I mean, the guy that made them all their weapons i guess right he's the one that made their weapons he's the one that makes like sinestro's ring right like that's that's what the weaponer did i guess these I, dudes are just like I they're guess. generic weaponer was like a baller he was a straight up he also ha he had like, like a shield and the shield was he like people it worked he a, like he a, a lantern shield and a hammer didn't he have a shield and a hammer i think so but like the shield's the thing that made like constructs and stuff which it wasn't oh, like a lantern ring. It was just like a that. shield that worked almost exactly like one. Oh, I think I interesting. A shield that makes the construct. Okay, all right. But well, anyhow, these are uh, but these those are accordion thunderers. Yeah. I like they this cool. though because we already know, thanks to a WizKids dialed in post they make, we already know we're going to get Necron 
in Notorious. And now we're knowing oh. that we're going to get these Cordian Thunder guys yes, in Notorious. Yes. And so I'm very excited for the even more lanterns we're about to get, which is so dope. So well, please, also, Orange Lantern we'll Lux, get please. more information this Friday, but it looks like we're getting a foot attached to yeah, something. Yeah, dude. I like the foot. I can tell that it's a foot. It's some dude's wearing slacks, and he's, I don't know what he's doing, but he is, I don't know, riding something. I don't know what is happening, but there's a foot, and uh, yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. But Simeon and I both built some pulp teams we want you guys to try out with these changes in mind. Simeon, you want to go into your pulp team a little bit? Yeah, so... I I said it on the video, I, or kind of went into it in the video, I think, but uh, I genuinely think Robot has a strong showing in, for Pulp. I think that uh, in the normal, uh, modern, competitive, Robot's a little on the outskirts of like what is great, but a lot of what makes Robot's good is in that uncommon, common, and rare like slot. Um so starting off, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with none of the above. No common, uncommon, or oh. rare. Uh, I'm starting with a starter set Batman team up cyborg. So okay. the cyborg, he's the B dial. He is 40 points. He has flight, five clicks of impervious, running shot for the first three clicks, and then he get, goes on to uh, special running shot force blast his last two clicks which is important he also gets range combat expert on those last two clicks he's only five clicks long um, and then his attack power his entire dial is woo baby the high tech master poison and pulse wave so he's a running shot pulse wave piece and then his last two clicks not only does he have range combat expert but he also has pulse wave comboed with force blast and running shot so a somewhat effective um little piece i think we talked in the video a lot about like how pulse wave is a really good power to have on hand in pulp because there's going to be a lot of rollouts there's going to be a lot of things that you have no answer for and pulse waves kind of something you want to have on every team so cyborg is even though <laughs> His name is Cyborg. He does have the robot keyword. So he's starting off the team at 40. Uh, the Danger Room Mystique is at 25. And then I just have all the X of Swords Danger Room constructs. So Mystique, Sebastian Shaw, Apocalypse, and Juggernaut. Uh, their big thing is um, when they make an attack, you get an error token for each one in the attack roll. And then you get up to three, and you can do your... Uh, printed damage you can do like your base damage after you get three and you can take full damage after you get three but before you get three opposing characters take a max of one damage from these guys and they take a max of one from opposing characters so mystique is your tie-up piece she's got plasticity two rollouts she's only three clicks long but she takes at least three hits to ko under normal circumstances uh, with those double rollouts and stuff. So she's just a very annoying 25 points. Sebastian Shaw is Leap Climb, Super Strength, Willpower, and Enhancement. So you're mostly using him for the Enhancement and the Underworld team ability. But at the same time, being a body blocker for 30 points and just getting in your opponent's face, uh, if they do end up hitting him, he gets way better stats bottom dial. He ends up being like at close... Uh, he's a 12 for 5 on his last click. Uh, then there's Apocalypse. Ooh, gross. Apocalypse is 60 points. I think he's the most expensive one that we've seen. Um, actually, no, yeah, he just he is the most expensive Danger Room construct that we've seen, including uh, Silver Age ones. Uh, he is your outwit. He's got toughness the whole dial. He's got phasing, psychic blast, top dial, and then charge, super strength, exploit, bottom. So he's always got an answer for... Um, most reducers with Psychic Blast and Exploit. And then uh, he has, he's the only one that has a Rally ability, and he has a Rally 6, and it's a uh, red Rally 6. So when an opposing uh, character rolls a 6, he can get a Rally die. Um, you can remove one of his, and if you do a friendly character that can use the Danger Room Construct trait, you give him an 
uh, error token and they gain colossal size until your next turn so it's pretty solid um he let like he basically lets you control the tempo as to where you get uh, rally dice and or not rally dice um the error tokens so if somebody already has two you can give him a free action and remove or add one and then they can do full damage that turn kind of activating them before they normally would be able to which is really nice uh and then he also has the ability um when he makes an attack you give him an error token or no that's the normal danger room construct he has uh they all have a KO effect, but his is like the worst. Uh, when he gets KO'd by an opposing oh. character for the rest of the game, that character has the Cosmic Energy team ability. Mm. So, uh, But he also has Cosmic Energy, his whole dial. And then the last is Juggernaut, who his main thing is he destroys blocking, which is pretty good. And then uh, when he does a capital move after resolutions, he can make a close attack. He has Empower, so... That won't help out your other danger room constructs, but that helps out people like Cyborg and uh, the other two people we'll talk about. So, danger room constructs total out to a hundred and sixty-five points, and then with Cyborg, that's two hundred and five. Um, so, the last two things I have: the Mad Thinker from Future Foundation at his twenty-point line. Uh, it's not the prime because it can't be the prime, but he has stealth, outwit, uh, six range, and then he has um, perplex, but only to target characters with the robot keyword. So he just has outwit perplex for 20, essentially. His other trait is uh, a sideline active, unique modifier. Friendly captains and sidekicks get plus one attack when attacking characters with the robot keyword so he's one of the ally traits but does not affect this team at all uh because nobody on this team is a captain or sidekick and then lastly oh, beautiful yeah so he's really just i mean 20 points for perplex outwit it's not the worst it could be he's extremely squishy he's two clicks long but we needed some amount of support power so support, yeah uh and then speaking of support the last or no this guy doesn't have support i don't think let me let me double check but i'm pretty sure it's the other star jammer person or not star jammer they might be a star jammer i don't know uh let's see anyhow the last person is war star at 75 points uh war star is a close combat piece just period zero range uh starts with charge quake which, another thing that's going to let you get through barrier and stuff. Uh, Sebastian Shaw, I didn't really mention it, but he does start with leap climb super strength, and he's got super strength this whole dial, so he can help move barrier if need be. Um, but yeah, War Stars, six clicks long, big reducers the whole dial. Uh, impervious, that goes on to combat reflexes and vulnerability. Uh, the probability control, but only to target himself or B knee. Uh, is his special damage power his whole dial which sadly is four range and then um his trait is once per game you can generate beanie bystander if beanie is ko'd by an opposing attack this game warstar has free make a ranged attack with a range value of six so you just get that so every turn he gets to make ranged attacks with a range value of six after beanie gets ko'd um and the little beanie that it spits out is a sidestep in cap super senses and empower piece that's tiny size so again there's not a lot of characters that can capitalize on the damage boosts but uh, for cyborg for war star there's a lot of like uh, little support aspects that this team has i like war star i don't think he's the strongest point in the team but i needed somebody on the team that dealt close damage that wasn't capped at one right away and for sure he was probably like my not my best option but he was just a good option i thought plus i really like the bystander gives you another option for attacking and stuff uh but no i with the danger a full 
team of danger room constructs and then the mad thinker i really needed somebody that actually could deal like four damage with an attack and yeah that's war star but that comes out to an even 300 it's all modern for now and uh it's all i mean it's all pulp so it's all relatively cheap i think cyborg's probably the most expensive being attached to a starter set but even then i don't think he's like he's not like a figure that people are hoarding or anything so sure he's not no i don't think he, he's got to be like five bucks if you check like cool stuff or something there's no way he's like would, crazy expensive i would imagine yeah can't yeah i just can't imagine he is all right well my pulp team i'll start at the same as simians because we have one figure in common here uh i got cyborg on my team he is just like what you said running he's got running shot force blast on his last two with range combat expert and he's got poison pulse wave the whole freaking time baby which is pretty dang diddly gnarly so what makes him cool that's it that's cyborg uh next up we're gonna do robin this is my one big change for just for everything i uh, was that i just had robin on the team i got rid of who did I get rid of? Manos. I got rid of Manos to add Robin because he's also 25 points, which is, I know, it's a bit uh, a bit controversial. I won't lie, but we did. Just we needed a leadership. We didn't have leadership otherwise. We also have Moss. He has Empower, Hypersonic Speed, all that stuff. That's why Moss is on this Titans team. We have Raven. This is the specifically starter set Raven. Full dial of stealth, shape change, full dial of shape change. On her last two clicks, she has a special power. It's really cool. This is kind of why you're playing her. Kind of not really. She also has TK, but it's once per game. It's power once per game. She's a character with the Teen Titans keyword in your KO area. If you do, you generate that character on its starting line, and your opponent scores immediately instead of when they're KO and protected out with. But bringing someone just back to life at like the end of the game at full like power starting line, sure, it's just Recruiter is really what it is, but it's so awesome. It's like once per game Recruiter, but it rocks. She also has TK. When she does, she can remove an action token from the place character. It's all right. Raven's mostly there for when she gets KO'd, she can turn into Red Raven, which is just gnarly. Yeah. So it makes people just really not want to kill Raven, which is nice. And then if you so, yeah. don't focus on Red Raven and she gets like those two rally dice or whatever she needs, it becomes a real problem. Oh, yeah, bro. Huge, huge problem. After Raven, we're going to go into Beast Boy. He's just a great taxi. He's got Passenger 4, and then he has all this cool stuff of switching dials. So when you want it to be a wing symbol, Passenger 4, he also has Precision Strike, ESD, and Shape Change. Or he can be a snake. And he has Shape Change every single dial. Or he can be a snake, and he's got Plasticity, Poison, Combat Reflexes if he's in close. Or he can be your flurry octopus beast boy where he's got an 18 defend. So usually you'll move up. You'll switch to the 18 defend beast boy. And then he'll be a flurry with a 10 attack, 3 damage, which is really cool. So I like this beast boy. I like the pick a power stuff going on, the switching dials type stuff going on. It's it's really sweet, and I like it a lot. So beast boy is great. He's our taxi. And the glue of the team, the last three gals that just make this team super fun and super playable... Batgirl at 20 points. She's a perplex piece with combat reflexes with the Batman ally. And she, of course, gives friendly characters with Teen Titans team ability, have the Batman ally team ability. Pretty darn gnarly. Now my entire team is stealthed. <laughs> then we have Power Girl. She is a big 75 points. I like her. I like her being nine clicks of length for Power Girl. It's really awesome. She is a 11 for four charge, super strength, 10 speed. Like she hits like a truck. It's great. Uh, and she gives all friendly characters of the Titans have Superman ally, which means I'm entirely stealthed, and I can see through all of your stealth, which is huge. Yeah. And then we have Jinx, and Sh Jinx is just the piece de resistance here with the Girls' Night Out trait, giving friendly characters of the Teen Titans team ability also get the Mystics team ability, and she is a deceptive six clicks long for 40 points and our prob piece on the team. Uh, with knockback coming back, Jinx, you can park her next to somebody and pulp. There may not be a ton of reducers in it, so you can she can just power action, knock you back, not even make a attack or whatever, just ping you like that. This team comes out to 295. I think it's great. It's got almost everything you need. We got a leadership. We have a perplex. We have a running shot pulse waiver. We have a TK. We have an empower. Uh, we have a taxi. And then we also all have stealth, all have seize through hindering terrain, all have mystics. It's really awesome. 
Raven dies. She brings in Red Raven. Red Raven just mercs people. I've played a version of this. I played it without Robin with Moss and Manos instead. I think Robin's probably better just to have a leadership. It's really good. He also is like combat reflexes and stealth like the rest, you know, so it's really hard to take out. He'll be a 20 from close with Beast Boys defend. So I think having leadership is just huge. This team has a ton of ways to heal because that's what the Titans team ability is. It's literally just X-Men. You roll D6. You heal in one click on a one through four, then you have to take an unavoidable damage if you healed somebody. Pretty gnarly. We are not playing Robin at his full points to be able to get any special stuff using the Titans team ability, and that's fine. We just want the leadership for 25 points. If there was a cheaper leadership, we would use that. But there isn't. We have Robin here, <laughs> which is fine. Sadly, he's not amazing, but he's still four clicks alive for 25 points, and that's like at least one Mystic's damage. He's not easy. He's got combat reflexes, stealth, whatever. So... That's this Titans team. I've had a great time running it. I really enjoyed it. And I played this team, well, a version of this team without Robin, so no leadership. Arguably a worse version when people were playing Team Up Cards and Molecule Man and Professor X. I didn't play against Molecule Man and Professor X, but I played against Team Up Cards, you know? So it it did really well. It won all three games that I played when I played this at a pulp tournament. So I would say give it a try. It's all from the Batman set. The only thing is that you have to get the starter for Cyborg and Raven. But that starter is just like a really cool and awesome starter anyways. But that is my pulp team. Nice. Yeah. I playing in Batman team up sealed. Um you could instantly tell that those like Titans were just They're they so just, good. They mesh so well together. There's like very very few times where a single set makes a keyword mesh so well and it was all just because like that like that bat girl super girl, or bat girl power girl jinx like those kind of combos where it was just like this one does this this one does this a fairly simple thing but big impact like having bat girl on the team so your whole team just has stealth now having super girl so your whole team can see through stealth and then, uh, yeah, Jinx, so they all have Mystics. All of that's like, I don't know. It just, it does work really well together. It is just, it's just so good. It's really good. Uh, but those are our two Pulp teams. I said it in the video, and I'm going to say it again here. I I would look out for some Guardians of the Galaxy theme team, guys. I have kind of messed around with it. The, I think people have been sleeping on the Star-Lord. He has a free knockback all characters, two squares, which is really good. When knockback damage is back, I and think then knockback's that better in pulp. I think it's got to be right. There's, like there's got to just be like less, reducers. less reducers. Yeah, that there has. I mean, to there's be, dude. there's also stuff like Beyonder and Thanos and whatever in pulp. But another thing where I I really hope this guy gets to shine in pulp. So I I already looking at like Star Lord. Um, also that Ant Man from Avengers Forever has like an Atom Micron ability. Where when adjacent characters get oh, an yeah, overpower yeah. act, you just place him adjacent. So like, there's like some pseudo alpha with the guardians. I haven't looked at the other keywords. So just like you know, T'Challa, Star Lord does the big keyword sheet with like Ravagers and Minions of Thanos and Wakanda and stuff. So I think it might be worth looking to see if those add any more alpha potential stuff to a guardians team. I don't know, but I'm also trying to mess around with like some guardian stuff, especially this dumb seven click long Ant Man who is just solid in, in pulp. He's just really good because seven clicks long and power and all this crazy stuff. So I would also look at guardians. We mentioned it in that video, but the more I look at them, I'm like, dang, I really like the stuff you can pull off here. But, but I do think like that robot team, this Titans team, it's hard to deal a bunch of damage to all these characters and you're getting hurt. You're messing people up. So. Check them out, guys. If you have any pulp teams you want to send us our way, I know I already had one listener send me a pulp team. And we kind of talked a little bit back and forth about it, which is pretty fun. Um, send it to us, dial H for hero clicks at gmail.com. Send us an email, or maybe just send Simi and I a message if you have us on Facebook, and we'll take a look at your team. Maybe we'll even talk about it ooh, ah, on the podcast. But that is pulp. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. We have two questions off rip here on our Discord. If you want to join our Discord, it is Patreon exclusive at the $5 tier. 
We have easily more than five dollars worth of fun each month on Discord. Plus, you get entered into all sorts of other cool stuff for Patreon, like getting action tokens and all these other cool rewards each month. You get to play Bad Samaritan with Simeon and I and a few of the other Discordian members on our Patreon Discord, and you have a chance to win even more cool stuff each month or be a part of our fun action tokens that we make every couple of sets with uh, hilarious little bystanders and fun fun art that one of our you know Patreons is luke shout out there so we do all sorts of cool stuff all sorts of fun games happen in their discord well worth the five bucks these questions coming in from matt reed he asks what rules would you use for hero clicks boxing chess boxing plays chess for five minutes each player and then they have a five minute round of boxing there's three rounds of boxing and chess would you make it the same rules for hero clicks boxing or what other fun rules could you do I've talked to Simeon before about yeah, I really yeah. want to do a Hero Clicks boxing video like so bad, so bad I, I want to do it. I feel like um, you could go to like which do you want more emphasis on the boxing or the Hero Clicks? Because if you're okay with it leaning more like heavy towards the boxing, anytime you would hit a character, you have to hit your opponent like physically. Oh like, boy! So, like, they get like Ooh. you put like ten minutes or ten seconds on the clock and. If you can't get like a clean hit on them, and by clean I mean like they you know uh, unguard right. strike or something, I don't know. You'd have to have like a referee just for that portion alone. But yeah, Probably. if you if you do physically hit them within those ten seconds, then like you did hit that character. It'd be a lot of breaks. There'd be a lot of breaks. There'd be a lot. There'd game. be a lot of breaks. Yeah, man. I, I had the idea that we would do something like. You play one round, like you get a turn, then your opponent gets a turn, and then you would box. For however long it took you to both take a turn, you would then box <laughs> for that like length. Okay. You know, so that way it would like go against like stalling and all this other stuff, you know, or hopefully you would want it to go I against. I mean, unless you're Matt Reed and then you take the longest turn you can, so you can just pummel uh, your just opponent. Just annihilate your opponent. Yeah. yeah. And then it would be like the same rules, right? I think if you like get checkmated or checked or something like that in chess, you lose, or like a knockout or whatever it's called in boxing, you, you win, right? If you, get, if you knock someone out versus if you checkmate them in chess, you also then win. So it's like Heroclix, same rules, right? If you Would beat you them in the game of Heroclix. Combine the like the score, because in boxing you get like a score for like strikes and stuff. Um, that's how they determine like non-KO oh, sure. like bouts or whatever. Um, would you somehow combine the boxing score with the victory points? Would there be like a mission point kind of thing? Ooh, like it's already like an alternate win yeah. condition. You just knock them out and you win. So you could be like behind. You could be, you know, zero to like your opponent having like 295 and all you've got left is like a Stepford Cuckoo or something. And then you talk, <laughs> and then like the turn, the turn ends and you, you know, get a lucky hit and knock them out and you just win. But no, like, I don't know. How how would you score it? Would you just, there's no scoring option in the boxing portion? You just... Yeah, would, you, would there be like a number of like victory points or if you run like a mission point team, you get some mission points for for boxing or whatever. Alternate, That'd be really yeah, funny. Alternate I, mission I would like point. that a lot. That'd be hilarious. You could, uh, <laughs> a mission point is every clean hit. I feel like it'd be really mission point heavy type gameplay then. The problem with the Hero Clicks no. Boxing League would be that people would try and play in both the Hero Clicks Boxing League and normal Hero Clicks leagues and you'd get like out of like a big Hero Clicks boxing tournament and then like nationals would be like the next weekend and you wouldn't completely clear your head from the Hero Clicks boxing. Oh, no. And so like round two of nationals you would accidentally just strike your opponent in the face. And just instantly be disqualified and be like, "No, yeah. I didn't mean to." And you have a we have I a thought, lawsuit on I, our hands. I did. I, I, I was the. No, no. This, is, this is legal, isn't it? No, it's part of the rules. It's part of the rules. It's like when and I just in, like uh, Adam Friedman is sitting there. He's got a black eye in his bathrobe. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck, man? That's the worst. The, the worst person you could hit because he is a lawyer. So that is true. Oh, the big lawsuit coming yeah. your way. Uh, no, I was I was gonna say when I was a uh, way younger. Uh, like still in elementary school, we would play kickball. And one of the rules in kickball is like you can throw, like when you're on defense, you can throw the kickball at somebody that's running around the bases. And if it hits them, they're out. 
Well, then I also played baseball. And so (laughs) as I was playing in a baseball tournament, one of the kids like hit the ball, like hit the ground. I like scooped it up and he's good, like half distance away from like the base from me and so i start sprinting after him and i'm probably like a foot where like if i just kept running i could have just touched him and he would have been out but no i no, just sure. i just rear back and whip the ball at him as hard as i can mm. <laughs> and everyone so just know. looks at me like and i was like ah like even as a child there was like a heavy you know this is like i was probably like seven or eight this was like a formative cringe mm. moment for me where i was just like, like oh i forgot am that i different things have am different i the bad rules. guy here <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i am i'm in the wrong definitely well like uh, the kid couldn't uh, complain because he didn't get out because that's not how it works in true baseball. yeah you don't hey, get out like yeah you can't complain even though i just smoked you with a baseball although if we made an extreme yeah. baseball league that would be a rule that i would enter if you can hit a runner that's between bases with a baseball while they're oh running. Oh my gosh. They're out. Ow. Yeah, like a oh. 90 mile an hour from outfield, just like slam into somebody's like side, crack a rib. It hurts so bad. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Extreme baseball. Dude. Extreme baseball is just bask- base catch ball. Instead. Yeah. Also, their Actually, entire uniform is cleats. So not only are they running with cleats, what? they have cleated pants, cleated shirts. So the if they slide or run into somebody, cleat, yeah, bro. cleat on this? cleat action. Ugh, I hate that. I hate the idea of the whole uniform being cleats. That sounds awful. It's <laughs> painful, bro. I'm killing kids here, man. This is dangerous, dangerous game. Oh, this isn't for kids. This is extreme. Right, right. For extreme, adults. extreme is not for explicitly yeah. not for kids. Don't do this at home, kids. Goodness gracious. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, Matt Reed, hopefully that answers your question there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Next up, Josh asks Calder, during the live, during the IPF live stream, did Simeon actually hit you with his hand or was it the tortilla? Your face was pretty red. I'm asking for a friend. I, it felt like all tortilla. It wasn't like a meaty smack. I was going to say, was, I, I thought it was, it was noise. great connection, though. That these tortillas make. Oh, yeah. That was also the was one really time I was able to hit action. someone with a tortilla, so I'm glad that I made it stick. Yeah, but, it, but no, that was that was yeah. a, a good tortilla hit. Actually, I think when, when doing tortilla slaps, I think that it's actually worse if it's all tortilla than if you connect a little bit with the hand. I, I feel know. like it takes away a lot of that. The, like, snap? I don't know. There's, like, yeah, that, that flat bit. It's, like... I don't know. If you were to get... There's no way I can compare this to anything without it sounding kinky, so I'm not going to. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel I feel like less of that... It, it stings more. When it's that flat, kind of thin part, it stings. Versus, right. like, a, you know, the thick bit of your hand. Yeah, that's just going to be like a spread. thud. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that is all the listener questions we have this week. Pretty quick short concise episode for you guys uh if you want to like i said write into dial h for hero clicks you can do so by joining our patreon by sending us an email dial h for hero clicks at gmail.com or keeping up with us on facebook and twitter bit of an update since we've been getting a lot of messages about it uh the ipf prizing from the live stream is gonna go out here pretty soon i've slowly but surely been getting some things out i sent like three or four last week i want to say but it's been a hectic couple of weeks with HeroClix. We're all human beings. We all have jobs that, believe it or not, don't lend us a lot of time to go to the post office. I know. Just wild idea there. Um, it's really tough. So it's just been – that's the way it's been. So if you want something during the IPF live stream, be rest assured. We have – if we have your address, we have your address. We are – we have everything in a box. It just – it's a lot of work to ship out – like 20, 30 different packages, getting them all packaged up, getting all the labels written out. It's just a ton of freaking work, guys. So please be patient if you want something from the IPF. And thank you for, again, supporting a pretty freaking awesome cause. Yeah. We'll have an update, uh, a bigger like IPF update at some point, too, outside of just uh, the shipment stuff. But um, we are closing in on having uh, the first flight purchased or potentially refunded, Ooh, that's I guess. exciting. But, uh, yeah, we, we're closing in on it. Um, I wanted to have them purchased last week. We're still 
getting some stuff sorted out, figuring some things out. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll soon be able to uh, post. I don't know how many people actually care about it, but I said I was going to do it, so I'll I'll be posting the uh, obviously like a screenshot of the fundraiser. PayPal, I think at this point is empty, so I'm not going to screenshot that. But then like the actual account that it went into, and then the account afterwards with like the two pending mm. flight monies going out or whatever. Uh, just so people know that, like, you know, also, I guess you could just come to Worlds and actually meet Edison Lee and meet Andrea if cool. you wanted to. Pretty That'd awesome. also be, like, proof of the fact that we did it. But uh, if you're not able to go to Worlds, then, yeah, we'll, there will be a post sharing that information for anyone that was suspicious or not, whatever. Yeah. No. Not at all, ladies and gentlemen. Not at all. But Avengers 60th. It's coming up. It's coming soon. We played in pre-releases. Also, let us know if you played in any pre-releases. Simeon. Yeah. Where could if, they go if they wanted to... If you want to <laughs> order some uh, Avengers 60th, and I think Notorious is up for pre-order as well now, you can go to CoolStuffInc.com and use code DIAL5 to get 5% off of any purchase there. They have the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. And if you want to pick up, oh, I don't know, the Wheels of Vengeance with special promo convention exclusive Alejandra Blaze figure mm. from the WizKids store, you can go to shop.wizkids.com where that's a thing that's happening. If you buy a brick of or pre-order a brick of Wheels of Vengeance, you get the free Ghost Rider convention exclusive along with it. And there you can use code DIALH10 to get 10% off of your Heroclix purchases. Also forgot to mention this during the news, but WizKids does have the Play at Home kit, which is like a werewolf, and it comes with a legacy card and map and blah, blah, blah. It's a Play at Home kit. It's an online exclusive, so it's only at their web store. Take that information as you will. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, they, six uh, people humor. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Zimmy will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm gonna make Hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow.